Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked on Badgers. Um, Jim Leonard is that dude. He he is. He is that dude. It is probably time to remove the interim tag. I've been on the fence about it for reasons I'm going to get into, but he's that dude. We're going to talk about that and everything Wisconsin-Maryland on today's Locked on Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked on Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what is going on, everybody? I'm Ryan Herring, host the Locked On Badgers. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in. As always, when we do these live shows, it's a lot of fun uh, just to get everybody in the community up, everybody uh, together chatting about it, talking about it. Um, I'm having a few just rando technical difficulties, but I think it's working fine, so we're going to get into it. Today's show is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com, promo code locked on. Get your first deposit doubled up to $100. And yeah, that, that was that was great, right? I mean, it was a dominating performance. Jim Leonard, if, if you just look at the point differential from when Paul Chris was coaching just this year to what's happened under Jim Leonard, and even if you throw out Ohio State, which may not be fair because we've seen other teams play Ohio State closer, but even if you throw out Ohio State, it is dramatically different. So we're going to talk about it. Uh, Rajiv, Brian, TJ, Mark, Adam, see you all in the, in the, the queue. Got a bunch of comments. And it, as always, this is a show for the people. This is a show for us to get together and talk about what just happened, what we saw. Uh, Rajiv, as always, man, uh, more than welcome. What's going on, my friend? How are you? How are you, man? I'm uh, love the game today. Love the game. You know how close we are to Jim Leonard being 4-0? That Michigan State game. I mean, we were, we were that close to him being 4-0. You know, in, in a weather game like this, execution is everything. You know, I mean, you're not going to be able to do whatever you want on offense. You know, there's a lot of factors out there, but we executed every aspect of the game. Credit to the O-line. I thought Joe Tippmann had a great game. I I started watching him throughout the game because I feel like he's just such a dominant force up there. And I think he's someone who needs to be mentioned. But listen, the offense did exactly what they were supposed to do. The the running backs put their foot in the ground. They ran. There was a couple iffy plays here and there. But for the most part, we did we did the right stuff. We had a. And we were still somewhat, somewhat unpredictable. I mean, Acker out of the backfield to the fullback, great play. Um, and the defense, I mean, my goodness. Maryland's averaging, what, 20 some, 27 points a game? I mean. Even more than that. They're in the, the low 30s. That. Wohler coming back, wow. I mean, Hunter Wohler is going to be such a stud for us for such a long time. It's really, really good to see. Um, yeah, I mean, I was really pleased with the performance. I just feel like. Look, this is Jim Leonard's team. You said it. You said it right. It, this is it. Like, this is what we need. I mean, his the guys are playing for them. He is. He's switching it up. He's changed the mentality. We've talked about it several times. This is exactly what we need. This is exactly what the Badgers have wanted for years. And look, he's doing it. And I mean, like I said, he's this close to being four and zero. And the mentality has changed. We're five and four. There's no question we're going to a bowl game. And it's just. I mean. You had said yesterday that you thought Maryland was one of the toughest games of the year left on our schedule, and you were right based on their offense. But I mean, we kind of we kind of made them look pretty bad today. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, just super excited about what I saw, man. I, I I just think this is a we're moving in the right direction. It's one step at a time. It's exactly what we wanted, and we're to the point now where you know here we are, and we should be able to close out the season. Every game's winnable, and I mean, let's let's get this going for next year. I want to ask you about, because uh, this was one of the more polarizing things I saw. And in the comments, let me know as well. And for the people coming up, I want your take on this. Because I feel like I disagreed with some of the comments as I was following just in-game on our Discord. What were your thoughts on Bobby Ingram today? You know, look, I think it's hard to judge because the weather is just such a big factor, right? I mean, it's it's not as easy as just, okay, we're playing Maryland. This is what their defense is going to do. You've got a lot of factors here. I mean, you saw... Graham Mertz, first couple plays of the game. I mean, he was skying it all over the place. Um, look, I, I think that the conditions make it hard. So that's number one. Overall, though, I wasn't really that displeased with what I saw out of the offensive play calling. I think that the fourth down, going for fourth down late in the game, I liked the call there. I didn't like the play call, though. But look, I mean, we ran the ball quite we, we ran, the, ran the ball quite a bit. I thought Skyler Bell's jet sweeps were good. I think that the passing plays we were running were okay. The execution wasn't necessarily always there. And I don't think we really need to launch it up going into the win in the third quarter. But that could have been a Mertz decision. That doesn't necessarily mean the play calls bad. Mm-hmm. I was okay with it. I, I did I don't really think that that B did that bad of a job. I mean, look, we won the game 23 to 10 and, and we were effective and we moved the ball throughout the game. And I think 
that's really down to the line play. That's down to the receiver play. So yeah, I was actually okay with it. What's your yeah? Take? I, no, I, I'm kind of right there with you. So I actually thought the first half was totally fine. Um, and people may disagree with that, which I love, by the way, we, we talk all the time in this show about disagreements. Good, right? Like honest, respectful discourse is great, but you saw Maryland, a team who relies on their passing game heavily, way more than we do. And on third and seven, and they're running the ball, you know, third and, and five, and they're running the ball. Like the, you saw when players are going out of bounds and they're tiptoeing because they're afraid to cut or stop suddenly, like it, you, it just wasn't an environment to throw the ball. And I felt like sometimes being smart is is knowing what you can do and doing less. I didn't say that very totally. eloquently. You would have said it better, but like it wasn't a game for the passing game. So starting and that's why execution matters. Like yeah, we had to run the ball. Into like, it. We, we want the ability to be able to power run. We, we were talking about that in the Discord. I mean, it's important to be able to run the ball when we need to. Today we needed to. We were able to. And execution is everything. You're absolutely right. We didn't need to rely on the pass. We, we know we can do the run, and we did it well. So, yeah, it's all about execution, and I think he did a fine job with it. It's a really tough game to call with those kind of conditions. You have no idea where the ball is going to go. You have no idea if a receiver can even touch it. The snaps are going over uh, Tongue of Iloa's head. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just – it's all over the place. It's tough to manage a game like that. People need to remember, too, and I'm not saying people don't, but this was a game that featured two of the top five statistical quarterbacks in the Big Ten, right? And Graham Mertz was 5 of 18, and – uh, Tagovailoa was 10 to 23. Like, it just wasn't that game today. Um, yeah. All right, we're going to get Brian into the next. Uh, Brian, you're coming up on the queue next. And then TJ, Mark, Chris, I see all you guys in there. We're going to get to everybody, I promise. But I want to hit a couple comments with you, Rajiv, first. Uh, on Culture Barbarian, who's always supported the show. This team feels different under Jim Leonard. I hope he gets the job. Uh, first of all, on Culture, as always, man, thank you for the support. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. But, yeah, like, this team feels different. <laughs> I mean, just think about the way we felt going into every game early in the season. We didn't know what we were going to see out of the offense. We didn't know what we were going to see out of the defense. We didn't know if we were going to be able to score points. Well, now we don't feel that way. The team has a swagger. Jim Leonard has a swagger. And it everything feels different. Uncultured Barbarian hits it right on the head. This is exactly what's happening in that locker room. You know the locker room's different. You know the players feel different. You know the front off. Everyone feels different. Mac- Macintosh. I mean, you can see the program heading in the direction that Wisconsin fans want it to head. I mean, this was this is not this is not a Big Ten championship season. This is one of those seasons we're just going to go through. We need to get as many wins as we can, but it's about setting things up for the future. And look what he's doing. Look the kind you can see the players rallying around him in the effort that they're giving. I mean, the O line has had a pretty you know tumultuous up and down year. We can all agree to that. Mm-hmm. Well, look how they play today. I mean. They were pushing Maryland around, and Maryland's defense is not bad. I mean, you know, we've we've come a long way this season, and look, this is Jim Leonard's job. I think we all can agree, like, sign him up, bring him into the office, give him the – he's not even sitting in the office, which I thought was pretty funny today hearing on the broadcast. Yep. Give him the keys to the office. Let's go. It's very on brand with Jim Leonard, right? Like, he's not going to sit there until he has the job. All right, Brian, let's get you on the show. Uh, appreciate you jumping in. And, Brian, what's going on, my man? Hey, yeah, this is good stuff today, um, especially in the conditions. So let, let's yep. go for it. Uh, several times in the Discord, you saw this, said it yourself. The D-line um, drew a line. Um, they, I thought we're playing well. There were the um, t- TFLs and then mm-hmm. also, you know, where they just ran into a brick wall at the line of scrimmage. They, they weren't really getting moved. And it seemed like also that the inside linebackers were able to uh, that there were gaps for them to get into um, so that they could shoot and make make plays. So I, I think the well that, that that's all I wanted to say was uh, give 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 some to the big boys up front on the D side. No, I love it. I think it's a great point. And we talked pre-show, uh, Brian, in the Maryland preview. Maryland has a good rushing attack this year. Like this is a game where they had to be able to run the ball and Wisconsin's defensive line completely shut them down. I think yeah, you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, he they absolutely pushed it. At one point during the broadcast, the announcers, who I thought was they were not very good, um, they said that, you know, well, the, the, the Maryland O-line's been playing pretty well. I'm like, the Maryland O-line's getting pushed around by our guys up front. I mean, you're absolutely right. The linebackers were able to get space in there and make those tackles, tackles for loss. I mean, Herbig was getting all over the place. And that's because in that defense, the big boys up front have to take up space and create those holes. And we were doing a great job against them tonight. Yeah, 2.7 yards per carry uh, for Maryland uh, with a team that was coming in really good. 
Uh, Brian, man, you, anything else you got? Uh, no, nope, we're all good. Happy, awesome. happy times. No, thank you so much for dialing in, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the show. Uh, TJ, you're coming up next. I do need to take a quick break um, for just to talk about one of the friends of the show. And then we're going to come right back with Rajiv. TJ, you're up next. Then Mark, Chris, and a bunch of comments. We're going to try to get to all of them. This is a great day. Big time performance from uh, Jim Leonard's Badgers. Coming up next, we're going to talk a little bit about that fourth down decision as well. Something that I find super, super interesting. That's coming up next on Locked on Badgers. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy remains your easiest way. Spice up your college football fantasy weekend. Parlay two to five players. They don't even have to be on the same team. And I talked about it pregame, right? This was a game to go under. Go under on uh, Tallulah, go under on Mertz. The passing game wasn't going to be there. The weather just made it impossible. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest way to get easy, quick cash. You don't have to wait for the end of the year. Uh, spice up the games. It's easy to play. You don't have to put a ton of energy in it, energy into it, and you can still enjoy your Saturday. So quick payouts, easy to play, um, eligible in over 30 states, and the customer support is incredible. And we have a great offer for you, free money. Sign up with the promo code Locked On. one word. Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. Deposit $100, get $100 for free. That's underdogfantasy.com. Find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store, Google Play Store. Underdog Fantasy promo code locked on one word. Get in on the college football pick a match today. And we're going to get right back into this. I, I appreciate everybody so much tuning in, listening, all the people watching live. Um, Rajiv, uh, we're going to get TJ on the show next, and then I'm going to bang out some comments. Uh, TJ, if you're there, as always, you are most welcome, my friend. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. How you feeling? Um, I'm 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 happy because we're we're looking better and better each week and we did good against a Maryland team who I thought was you know really good and um we just played really we played excellent on defense offensively um we given the conditions we played well enough um obviously we couldn't really pass it because it was it just was it just wasn't the day to pass it today but the running game looked really good. And you see what happens when you give Grindo normal carries instead of trying to do trick plays with him. Just give him the ball and let him let let him work. Rajiv, what what, what do you think about Garendo? Man, I mean, I feel like on the show, every one of us, we all love Garendo. And he is he's talented. I feel like someone in the Discord even put some comment about how he looked like Jonathan Taylor. I don't know who said that. Someone oh, said Scott. that. I, I want to was it Scott? Yeah. I mean, and he did today. He kind of did. Look, look, the guy's talented. He's worked so hard in his career. He's been injured. He's had, you know, fought through adversity. And I'm so happy that he's getting the ball more. And he's a great backup behind, um, behind BA. And he's doing a great job. I like that we can mix up. We, we can we can run him up the middle. We can run him on those plays. We can also get him on the outside, get him out of the backfield passing. He is so talented. He's such a key part of this team. And I think down the stretch, he's going to be used more and more every game. Yeah, he's such a dude too that it's gonna. It feels like, and Mark and Chris, I see you guys in the queue. We're gonna get to you guys next, I promise. Um, he's a dude that you're gonna look back on and wish you could have found more ways to utilize him when he's gone. And some of that's injury. Like he's had a lot of injury problems. We all get that, but like you just have to find ways to get that dude more touches. I mean, what he did on that that eighty something, eighty seven yard run. I forget off the top of my head what it is. Like that's people don't do that. That's unusual. You have to get him the ball more. Um, so I, to TJ's point, man, I hope we do. Uh, TJ, I want to loop back to you, man. Um, is there any reservation left for you with Jim Leonard, or is it done? Wrap it up, give him the job. I think you have to give him the job now because the the longer you drag it on, it just sometimes is like you can almost – I don't think it will happen, but you can almost make him lose confidence if you just drag it on. You know, he's doing performance after performance – and you're still haven't given him a job because at the end of the day, right now, he's still the interim head coach. He's not the head coach, but I think he should be the head coach because he's having them, he's making them play at another level. And he's giving them um, a lot of energy that we just didn't have with Paul Chris this year. Yeah. And Adam Hill with a comment on that similar, similar theme. You know, I love Jimmy's joke post game. How long until the interim tag can be removed? I think everyone's asking the same question. What more does he need to do? Um, and Deborah Down, Drown, who's also supported the show a long time. I sure hope McIntosh calls Leonard in for a meeting to offer him the job like right now. Like, let's give it to him now because what's the point in waiting anymore? That's kind of where I'm at. Um, TJ, man, you got anything else you want to you throw out there? 
Um, I, maybe they're just waiting for them to um, secure a bowl spot um, and, to, and to give them the job. Maybe to just have that security, I guess. But that's really the only thing I can think of. I don't know what would be the point of waiting until, you know, the end of the year to offer them the job. That wouldn't really make any sense. Let me yeah, throw I was this out there to – oh, sorry, Rajiv. I'm going to throw yeah. this out there for both of you guys and anybody in the comments. What is the – need for Chris McIntosh to make the, the move now? Like, I guess that's where I would throw it out there. Why does he need to hurry it? Because Leonard's yeah. not going anywhere. For me, the reason is recruiting. I think that's, and it's also to, to the transfer portal, things like this. I just feel like the stability in the team, you know, when, when you're, you're sitting and talking to high schoolers and wanting to bring them in, you, they got to know who the coach is going to be. And and I, I, I can see that argument. I can see the fact that, look, you know, we don't need to take the interim tag off. He needs to prove himself throughout the entire season, finish off the season, and then he gets the job. But I do think that based on what we've seen, if it's going to help, if, if it's going to provide any assistance to next year and future years with our recruiting and the stability of the program, to me, it's worth it to take the tag off now. That's that's my reasoning. And Dave Johns, who I think is a childhood friend of mine. I can't tell for sure because there's probably more Dave Johns is out there, but I grew up with a Dave Johns, the Badger fan, a great dude. Um, and he says, I'm very skeptical about Jim Leonard ultimately. I was very skeptical uh, about Jim Leonard, but I'm warming up to it. Clearly, the guys buy into him. That's something we've all talked about. The the culture, the culture. feels different. The energy feels different. It looks like they play harder. Uh, TJ, man, as always, you are most, most appreciated and welcome. I'm going to uh, bring Mark on the show next. Actually, we'll hit a couple comments, so I want to make sure I give Mark a second uh, so he can get his stuff set up. That's something I have failed to do in the past. I've shotgunned people. So let's, let's bang out a few more uh, comments on this because there's a ton to talk about. I want to, Rajiv, I want to talk to you about that fourth down call. Yeah. So fourth quarter, I want to set the scene. This is literally the moment. I put this in the Discord. This is literally the moment where I'm like, oh, jail's the guy. I'm done. I'm I'm completely done. So fourth quarter is fourth and six. Wisconsin was up 20 to three, right? So 17-point game. And most coaches, because coaches are conservative dinosaurs for the most part, kick a field goal there. They make it 20. But a field goal still keeps it a three-point, three-possession game. Leonard went for it, fourth and six. And the announcers were just like off in a cloud somewhere. They didn't even realize what was happening. But that's a big time strategic decision that Paul Chris doesn't make. And at that moment, I was sold on Jim Leonard. I'm done. I'm good. Situational decision making, right? I mean, that's what coaches are there for. And you're absolutely right. There's no reason to go up. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, there's no reason to stay a three score game. Let's 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 take the risk. I mean, it was I don't know if it was was it fourth and two. I can't remember exactly what it was. I think it was fourth and six, actually. Yeah, it was fourth, fourth and six. I think the second time it was fourth and two when, yep. when he kicked the field goal without well, which we go for it. But yeah, totally. Like I said, I don't like the play call that they used. I, I would have liked something different. I would have liked someone out of the backfield. I would have liked some a little bit of a, a misdirection or something. But I thought that, yeah, I mean, that's the killer instinct. It's not just about being conservative. It's about go for the win. How many times have we looked at the television and watched Paul Chris make decisions? And you're thinking, what are you doing? Like, just mm -hmm. let's go for the kill. This is football. This is a game. We're trying to win the game. And you make you score a touchdown there. The game's over. The game is over. And I mean, you're talking about a, a defense that has been shutting out Maryland the entire game. Go for the jugular, right? So I was all about that decision. I loved it. I know everyone in the Discord was just like, yes, this is great. Yes, this is great. Let's do it. And then when, the second time when we kicked it, I was like, well, we don't need to do that. It's fourth and two. Just go up the middle. I mean, keep. there's no yeah. – And if, if we don't make it, we give them the ball back at the 10-yard line. There's no need to kick that field goal. But, yes, love the decision. Thought it was a great – um, a great move for Jim. And that's something, again, I'm not trying to, I say this all the time. I don't want to dance on Paul Chris Gray, but Paul Chris wouldn't yeah. have made that move. Like yeah. we need a coach who strategically in the right moments can make big time decisions and not act like a dinosaur. And Jim Leonard going for it on fourth down right there. I was literally, that was like, that was it for me. My drink was almost completely full of Jim Leonard optimism. And that was just like the top. That was like the umbrella. I'm like, I'm done. I'm good. I've seen all I need to see at this point. Uh, Mark, I know it says getting on the show. Let's get you on here. If you have a sec. Uh, and as always, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Everybody join the show. Mark, what's going on, my friend? Doing good. Great game by the Badgers today overall. Yep. How you feeling? I feel pretty good. And I feel good about their defense getting better and better each week. And hopefully can continue this, uh, getting better and carry it over next against Iowa. Yeah, the defense is a good point. How much of the defense, and I can't get to both of you guys. Mark, I'll start with you on this one. Is the defense just getting a little more healthy and more settled in? Or is this... Is it more of a reflection of the, I don't want to say level of competition, but we played Maryland in bad weather. We played Northwestern. You know, earlier in the year, we we played Ohio State. We played Washington State with a better quarterback. 
curious what your thoughts are here. I think it's a combination of both as far as like they're getting healthy and it's nice that Waller that like, came back and that was nice and but they're getting there and starting to get in place and like I said, they're getting better and that's how I feel and I said the weather I guess didn't really help Maryland much today either either. Yeah, I agree. It's a combination of a lot of factors. Um, Obviously, you know, having injuries is is an issue. And when you get those guys back, the team's healthier. Coming off a bye week is the healthiest we've been. So, yeah, that makes a difference. But listen, I also would like to think that it is some of JL bringing culture change and the guys playing harder a little bit. I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't just look like we're playing better. I feel like we're playing harder. And that does make a difference in the margin in, in this game and the margins in college football are small. So when you can make small changes like that and you're playing with more intensity, with more fire, with more grit, it makes a difference. So yeah, injuries, obviously playing a big factor. Um, obviously we're playing, but we're playing, a, it was a good Maryland team, bad weather. So that makes it a little easier for the defense, but I mean, we were able to move the ball on them. They weren't able to move the ball on us. So our you know, big up to the defense. I think that they had a great game. Um, and the, the intensity was there every single play. I mean, look, Hunter Wohler brought tons of intensity today. So excited to have him. And yes. just all, every step of it, I mean, you can see the guys playing harder. And I, I have to attribute that to what we're seeing as far as the team culture. Mark, where are you at on, on Jim Leonard in general? I've been asking kind of everybody. Are, do you have any reservations left, or are you done? You good? I'm done. I think they should just give him a job just I feel like because of recruiting and just keep the guys uh, here so they don't transfer and have them wondering who will, what our coach will be. If I just give him a job right now. I yeah, it's hard to argue with that. Mark, man, thank you so much for dialing in as always. Uh, Chris, we're going to jump to you next. You've been uh-huh. in the queue for a bit. Uh, Mark, thank you. I hope you dial in again next week, man. Thank you for uh, supporting the show. Chris, my man, what is going on, my friend? Uh, You're paused up. I'm going to take you off. If you're still there, I'll bring you right back in, Chris. And a couple things I want to talk about again. Uh, Actually, there's Chris. Uh, What's going on, man? Hey, yeah, sorry. I lost the connection there. Um, No worries. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, great win for the Badgers. Um. I think the I think the run by Garendo is is got to be put up there as one of the great long runs of the modern era in in Wisconsin history. I mean, a long run like that. We've had some long ones. You think back over the years, obviously with with Dane and Gordon, and you know, I'm just trying to think back again. Eighty it was an 89 yard run, right? I mean, that's and but we haven't seen a guy. Um, with Taylor, obviously, but, but a guy tiptoeing the sidelines like that. It kind of reminded me of the uh, when the uh, the Melvin Gordon, you know, 400 plus game when he, he you know, uh, hurdled some Nebraska defender going down the sidelines. You remember that kind of that was a classic, but that was a, that was a great run. And it's just so great to see two games in a row. Um, a guy with that kind of game breaking speed being part of the office, because, again, I don't think. And as I watch that play, you know, that's not a play that Braylon Allen would have been able to take at the distance, I don't think. So um, I think that Garendo brings that that dimension to the offense, and I'm, I'm glad they're, they're working him in. And they, man, my other observation is just I think the defense, that was the best defensive performance of the season. I mean, they were just flying around. I mean, I just – it was exciting to watch. It was exciting defense to watch. And um, having Wooler in there was awesome. I was so happy to see him get that pick. Um, you know that Jimmy Leonard was jacked up by that <clears throat> um, because it's just a great pick. It was great hands, um, just a great awareness play. So, um, but, you know, I mean, we got to get the offense on track. And the offense did not look good, particularly in the second half. Mm-hmm. And it's, good. it's, it's a bit worrying uh, as we, um, you know, go into the game against Iowa. Um, you know, the, the offense is going to have to play a hell of a lot better. And I'm not just going to say it was, it was the uh, conditions. We, we've got to play better. Mertz has got to play better for us to, to beat the Hawkeyes because they, they seem to figure something out this weekend. They obviously took it to Purdue. It was going to be a tough game. Yeah, that could be a very low-scoring game for sure. Um, <laughs> what, what are your thoughts? Again, just asking everybody here on Jim Leonard, are you, are you good with turning over that, that mantle at this point? I am, 100%. I mean, I don't think – I just think this is a show. I, my, you know, my, uh, you know, I think there's a process that, that, that they have to go through. 
um, you know, as somebody who worked for the the university uh, at one point, I mean, there's there's a bureaucratic process to hiring this, and and the athletic department is not exempt from that. Um, you know, the whole thing with Chris McIntosh, you know, clearly Barry's handpicked su- successor. There was a, there was controversy around that. Um, there were there were a lot of people who you know wanted a you know a, a you know a minority athletic director and and you know the days of being able to in this era the days of being able to hand pick somebody um you know from the group of family you know and and certainly leonard is part of the you know the alvarez group those days are numbered it's not just at wisconsin it's at any school these days so you know i think that they have to show that there is some sort of process they're just not gonna they're just not gonna they can't just hand the job to him or they can't coronate Leonard as the next coach, but you know, ultimately that's, what's going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. and, and it should, you know, I think he's, I think he's earned it. Yeah, I agree, man. Chris, thank you so much for jumping on the show, dude. As always, I yeah. really appreciate it. Good takes. Thanks guys. And Dawson Prillip uh, says, got to wait uh, for a week before they give the post or they have to post it for a week before they give it to him. And he says, list it now. Yeah, you probably can. Um, I want to, I want to go back to you. I want to take a really quick break then, Rajiv. I want to talk to you about a couple stars that I think have really emerged for the Badgers and then get your final takes on this game and then run through some more comments because we got a bunch of them that I want to get to. Um, so that's going to come up next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for our sponsors. All right, welcome back to Lockdown Badgers. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, Rajiv, I, I want to ask you about uh, what, what is probably becoming my favorite player on defense, Kamoi Latu. <laughs> Has there been a player that you can think of in the last couple of years that has just exploded from not having a lot of expectations to looking like a future star defensively? I mean, you're so right. I mean, he is just it's it's kind of like you can see the progression from where he was at the beginning of the year to now. And he's taken such a big leap, um, you know, and I, I think I, I think kind of the, the way we saw the leap of Braylon Allen last year almost to him and he kind of bummed. He kind of came out of nowhere, not really out of nowhere. But yeah, I mean, look, I think that he is. You can look at that defense and you can see a lot of stars that are going to be there for a while. Latou, Wohler. I mean, we're going to be we're going to be playing good defense for a while. And and I think that seeing the seeing the and it's that intensity again, like I mentioned, you know, we love that at Wisconsin. We've had a good defense for several years, and it doesn't just come out of it's 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 talent, but it's also their growth that they're seeing. And this is what Jim Leonard has done for a long time. He's taken people who are they're good athletes. But he's teaching him how to be intense. He's teaching him the, the skills. He's teaching him how to play smarter and then beat the guy in front of them, like he said in his press conference we talked about. So, yeah, I mean, I think Latou is going to be a stud. And I think there's a lot of studs on that defense. Yeah. Do you talk about an A plus transfer wire edition? Or transfer wire is probably wrong. Transfer portal, sorry. Transfer portal. Transfer portal edition. Um, and one of the guys we didn't talk about a bunch in the offseason, you know, we talked about Keontas Lewis and Jay Shaw and Dort. Uh, but it's really and Justin Clark, but it's really this and Vito Calvaruso. You guys remember him, right? He's a kicker, I think. Um, but Latou's a star, and you're gonna pair him with Hunter Wohler and have Austin Brown behind him for the next several years. Like that's gonna be the best safety duo over a several year period that Wisconsin's had. And please, somebody fill in the blank because I can't think of one over a multiple year period. I mean, we talked about the schedule that Wisconsin has next year and the way that things can set up. And if you look at that defense and you can see who's going to be coming back, it's it sets up nicely, you know, with Jim Leonard most likely, of course, taking the position and, and seeing what we have. It's going to be it's going to be really good to finish this year out and, you know, on a high note, hopefully getting that axe back, which would be really great. And then, you know, I mean, we've got a lot to look forward to. And it's it's great to see. I would like to I would like to bring up something. I, there's a lot of comments here. Um, about the offense. And I know that we kind of talked a little bit about this, but I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of mixed um, reviews on how we look today. And I, I got to say, like, I think it was maybe Badger and, and Bournemouth fan um, that was talking about how, you know, the offense wasn't, um, wasn't the strongest, but I, you know, I think it's tough with the conditions. I think we played fine. I, I really wasn't bothered by the offense. I, maybe I was just kind of seeing things a little differently, but I, I really wasn't bothered by it at all. I thought that we did what we had to do. And in a game like this, what I'm focused on is the O-line. And I thought the O-line played really well. Yes, there were some mistakes. Yes, you know, we could have closed out the game and we didn't. And, you know, we, we had a couple turnovers there late on fourth downs. I get it. Missed field goal. But 
we moved the ball on them in horrible conditions. And I'm, I'm curious if anyone, if you have anyone in your queue that was at the game, I was, I'm wondering what it was really like at the stands. Mm. There. I mean, you saw everything was emptying out and I'd love to hear some comments from people who were there because I mean, Same. I think we're underestimating how difficult it is to play a game in those conditions. No, I think it's a good point. Now I will say this. So I think this is really interesting. And before I get into that, I want to, so we, on the discord, for those of you who aren't in our discord, we do giveaways. The giveaways are completely free. I pay for shipping. It's just a way to say thank you. I really do appreciate everybody supporting the show. Uh, last week's giveaway, the guy never uh, claimed it. So I'm just going to do it right now. Um, trivia question. The giveaway is these amazing, they are all-time favorite Wisconsin plays, the all-time greatest Wisconsin plays on coasters. It's made out of slate. It's awesome. Uh, one of them may or may not already been used on a beer for me. Um, <laughs> but here's the, here's the trivia question. First one in the comments that gets it. Last consensus Wisconsin All-American offensive lineman. Just give me the name. You win the coasters. And first one in the comments does to do that wins wins the the coasters. You have them for free. I pay for shipping. It's all good. Just a way for me to say thank you. Um, remember, the question is last consensus Wisconsin offensive lineman that was an All American. I don't know if I jumbled that up, but you guys get it. Uh, Rajiv, I want to go back to your point uh, with the offense with Badger Bournemouth, who had the comments as well. I agree and I disagree. So oh, Dawson, Dawson's got it. It was Biadish, uh, 2019. Great job, buddy. Uh, send me a DM. Um, and I will mail it out to you. Uh, send in a DM on Twitter, on the Discord, whatever. Mail it out to you. You'll get it for free. Just a way to say thank you. Um, I want to talk about the offense. I thought, so I agree with you for the most part, Rajiv. I, I thought the conditions were terrible. I didn't mind kind of settling into the game. I thought in the second half, it got a little inconsistent. Like it, it got a little too much feast or famine. Like after a couple of those deep shots, I felt like we were kind of um, just playing a little too into their hands because they weren't working. Um, we got a couple pass interference calls, which was great, but we almost um, almost threw two picks out of it too. And Mertz wasn't feeling it. In those moments, I thought we could have gone more to a shorter passing game, maybe a screen game. The jet sweep was two for two, maybe fake that a little bit more. So I would, I would say C plus B minus. I didn't think it was terrible. The weather conditions were awful. You could see Maryland playing it really safe as well. That being said, I thought the second half was inconsistent. Yeah, I can see that. I, definitely. I mean, certainly those two passes that were that should have been picked off that were thrown in the third quarter way, you know, in, up into the wind. That's that's not a good decision. But I think some of that's decision making on Mertz's part as well. But yeah, definitely understand. I think if you just look at the game holistically, though, you know, it, we're still playing better than we have been. And this was not a game we were going to open anything up. But yeah, I thought some of the jet sweeps were great. I think seeing more of those would have been good. At passing out of the backfield we don't we didn't need to launch it long for sure but also i have to respect the fact that we were seeing matchups out there and should it have been done in the third quarter no because we we're going into the wind but if the matchups are there i kind of like the aggressiveness of saying all right like if we take a shot or two i mean bad execution which i brought up before but you know i, I just think that the conditions were really bad we have to give them credit yes could it have been better certainly do i would i expect it to have been better if if the conditions were normal, I think we would have been fine. I think we would have exposed mm -hmm. some of their just secondary issues. Uh, so yeah, I, I can see your point though. I mean, I definitely second half where there were some more issues for sure, but I think it's a good point that you're bringing up though. Badger fans often say, be more aggressive, take the shots. And then he's taking shots in the, and it, sometimes and I just did. I'm like, I don't know, maybe don't take those shots. Now I do think though, this game, the weather just, it wasn't happening. And after one or two or three of them, I'm kind of like, Mm, yeah kind no, of get that. not get that. there it feels like ingram and by the way i think it's important for all of us to realize that ingram is a first-time offensive coordinator like he is feeling his way through this and this has not been the ideal situation for a first-time offensive coordinator to come into so i do give him some some leeway there and the running game worked to your point he's yeah. he has a role in that too bobby ingram calling offensive plays has an has a, has a big role in the running game working so well which won the game today uh sergey bush and again, if I mispronounce any names, I apologize. Uh, offense was great compared to early in the season. Yeah, it's better. It is absolutely better. So uh, 100% agree I mean, there. I mean, would we would we have scored 23 points with early in the season in these weather conditions? No. No, we probably no, wouldn't have done not it. Not a chance. <laughs> in good weather conditions. Again, I bring it up. We scored 14 against Washington State at home. We scored 10 against Illinois at home. We scored 21 against Ohio State. Like We were averaging 15 points per game under Paul Christ against Power 5 teams. Okay? 15. Like we're averaging 30 something under Jim Leonard. Like the difference is there. And it's not just quality of, of opponent because Washington State doesn't have a meat grinder. They're good, but we scored 14 at home. Yeah. Like there is a tangible difference here. Uh, Deborah Drown, great comment. 
Let's who reminds me of Reggie Pearson. He's like a taller Reggie Pearson. Yeah. That's, who, a, that's a good call. That's it's a good take. It's a great take. I want to talk, I want to finish up here and then get through a couple more comments. Uh, special teams was pretty good today. Yeah. I mean, there was a shanked punt early in the beginning, but you get multiple field goals. You don't you don't botch any uh punts, you know, muffing them in, in really bad conditions. Coverage units are really good. Again, Kamoila too is a beast on coverage units, big shocker, but it was a pretty good special teams day for us. You know, and I also would say let's give some credit to Van Zelst. I think uh, you know, we, with with the issue with the, with the kicker injury we have, and you know, yeah, he missed one, but look at the weather. It's, yeah, I mean, I don't think I wasn't really bothered by that. I think we should have gone for it on fourth down there anyway. But I think that you know he's he has a nice leg. I mean, I think the first one was thirty eight yards that he made, and it looked it would have been good from forty five or something. I mean, it, it's nice mm-hmm. to see that. You know, I feel like the last. I always think back to good old Vitaly Pasetsky. I love when we had we had that guy with us, but I just. It's nice. It's, it's not saying he's great. He's not some amazing kicker, but it's just nice to see like small improvements. And yeah, to your point, special teams all around played really well. And we got to give credit where credit is due. Agreed. Um, and again, uh, I thought turnovers, lack of turnovers. Brian Latch brings it up. No fumbles by ball carriers today. Mertz got away with a few, which we talked about. Um, but the thing that Mertz has done really well with that probably doesn't get talked about a lot is his pocket awareness with the ball. He got hit several times today in the pocket. He wraps it up. He doesn't fumble when he gets hit. Um, and the ball carriers didn't put it on the ground either. So, yeah, that's a, it's a really clean effort in terms of turnovers for the Badgers today. Um, I hope Mullins comes back. TM3389. McDonald just isn't quite it. Yeah, I think McDonald's young. Mullins would make a difference for sure. McDonald missed a couple tackles today. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Rajiv, I want to kind of kick it back to you. Do you have any other um, big thoughts, big ticket items that you want to talk about? Um, yeah, listen, I would just say, um, I have a couple of big, one thing and then one kind of fun little thing, but, um, I, I, like I said at the beginning, I think it's so interesting to think about where we are so close to him being four now. And there was a comment someone else put in the, in the, in the comments here saying that, you know, there's a real chance for us to go unbeaten the rest of the way. And there absolutely is, you know, I think our toughest game, I know that you'd kind of thought it was this today. I think I was the toughest game we have left going to Kinnick stadium is, is always going to be really tough. They clearly have a good defense. Um, you know, whatever happened to P- Purdue, who knows where they went. But, I mean, so, look, that's going to be really tough. And I do think we have a chance to to win out. I mean, obviously, we all know what the last game of the season is. We all know what that's going to mean to us. And I think it know, JL knows what it means, and, and I'm excited for that game. I'm excited to, to, to beat the heck out of those guys. But um, the, the, fun, the funny thing I would say is I really like the red pants. You know, the, the, you know, the uniforms, but man, I would like to see some, I like you know, the basketball uniforms just came out. They look so cool. I love the, I love them. Mm-hmm. I wish we Those had a fire. little bit of change in our uniforms. I'd like to have a little bit of, I li, something as little as the red pants gets me excited because I like to see the all red or, you know, the red on the road with the pants. But anyway, just something fun. I, I would like to see some, you know, growth in the Wisconsin uniforms. I know that it's traditional. I know there's people out there that are traditionalists with it. I get it, but I think it'd be kind of fun. But yeah, super happy about the win today overall. Really excited about what the next three weeks can can yield. I mean, Iowa, Nebraska, Minnesota, all teams in our division, all teams that know us, all games that are going to be difficult and just really excited to see what happens with uh, – with, I mean, I feel like we're so excited to watch these guys every week yeah. because of what Jim Leonard has done with the program, and that's super fun. And, yeah, I mean, listen, Wisconsin football is exciting, and let's do it. And, th- listen, that's something I think it was uh, on Culture Barbarian said. It's fun to watch them again. Yeah. Like, it's just fun to look forward to Saturday and not – not feel like you're doing because you have to do it. Um, we all have fan loyalty. The is a different vibe. Uh, nine again says something wrong with the offensive line. A couple of things he wants to talk about. Allen dances too much, and watching Ingram punt return makes me almost miss the Dunner. Uh, Jack Dunn hasn't made a ton of appearances on this show, but it feels like the Badgers have really emphasized on, on that last point. It feels like they've really emphasized just be safe, catch the ball. And there hasn't been a lot of big plays there. Um, Stephen Watson, or Stephen Watson, former Badger out of Maryland, I believe, if my memory banks are correct. As a former Badger from 99 till 2002, Jim Will and is getting us back to what Barry instilled. Jim Leonard is a Barry Elvis product. Mac knows it, and so do all true Badger fans. Um, thank you so much for commenting. That's awesome. That's great insight from somebody who was in that program inside the walls. And I think most people would agree. Like, it is getting us back to holding players accountable, you know, playing hard, executing, and being schematically sound. And that, a lot of that Alvarez instilled. I think Chris McIntosh sees that. 
And that player development too, you know, that we talked about that, I think last week at some point, that's another thing that Barry instilled in this program. And, and Jim has talked about it at pretty much every time he's, he's interviewed, he talks about the players, he talks about the culture and the development, and you can see that coming back. And as Badger fans, I think we can all agree that, you know, under Barry Alvarez, we had that look at, I mean, look at the last 20, 25 years of our program and what we've been able to succeed, how we've been able to succeed, the number of wins we've had. So, yeah, I mean, we're getting back to the right direction. And I think, you know, Stefan says it, says it great. No, 100% agree. A um, couple more quick comments. Nathan Ruffalo, who's been with us really since the beginning, your boy Garendo had such a nice touchdown run today to doing that on the sideline. You know, and that's something I think it was Brian earlier on the show, or Chris, I forget. I think it was Chris that talked about it, the Garendo touchdown run. But you got to get that two more touches. I put it in the Discord, Rajiv. A couple jet sweeps, a couple screens, maybe a wheel oh, route. Right. And in these conditions, he did, he did that too. I mean, that's not easy to do. He's tiptoeing on the sidelines. Like, what? That was great. I thought for sure he stepped out. And then I was like, oh my God, he actually didn't step out. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, he's a playmaker. He's a playmaker. Give him the ball. A hundred percent agreed. And someone mentioned, um, we were talking about uniforms. Yeah. The variety is great. And listen, Jim Leonard said it. Like, we talked about when he said it, tradition doesn't have to die when you adapt, right? Yeah. Wisconsin can keep their tradition, but there's some, Players like new uniforms. Fans like it. I think Jim Leonard's going to be all on board. Um, Badger and Bournemouth, got to get that badge, that quarterback from Colorado signed up. That's obviously Cole LaCrue. Listen, I I think it'll happen. I think it's a big pickup. We'll have to see. Um, expect news of that coming up soon. Um, a couple more quick comments. Stephen, Waston, uh, Stephen Watson, sorry, I keep jacking that up. With Jim being the head coach, if that does happen, he's younger, will bring a lot more fresh innovation. Not changing the culture, but things like uniforms, younger vibe, younger swag. Same thing we've been talking about. Yep. So I totally agree. I just think it's, I mean, you know, I think I mentioned a couple, a few days ago, you know, over the last few years, we've been a program that's been really close. We've been on the edge of that college football playoff in past years. We've been, we haven't quite gotten over the mountain yet. And I feel like, and I could be just overstating this, but I feel like this is, this kind of gives us hope for, at least for me, that you, we get back to the basics, we get back to player development, we get back to building our program the way that we have I feel like Jim Leonard is the guy that could just take us to the next level. I'm not saying we're going to win national titles already. I'm just saying that, you know, it, it's it's the excitement of saying, look, he's someone who can lead us into the future and freshen things up, modernize things at Wisconsin while paying homage to what got us here, running the ball properly, player development, power run game, but also changing things up to take the next step. And, you know, you can see that developing and it's, and I, I may be totally off base by saying it, but I just, I'm, I'm really pumped about what the future holds because I can just see small changes and I think it makes a difference. Yeah. I think we're, we're on the same board there. And I think this was finally the game. I'm going to wrap up here because I've, I've kept everybody for probably longer than I should. I do appreciate, especially Rajiv who's, who's sitting here. Um, but I do appreciate, every, I, I do want to make that very clear. I appreciate everybody tuning in so, so much. Like this is a show for all of you. Like this is a show for all of us to build this community together. If you're interested, join the Discord, a bunch of Badger community there. We, we keep it very respectful. A lot of message board. I mean, it's just very respectful there. We can disagree, but it's all good folks talking Badgers and other things. And we do free giveaways there to say thank you. So join the Discord. I'll put that uh, out in the, out on Twitter if you don't know the link. Um, aside from that, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, we're going to keep talking to you all. Rajiv, as always, we're smarter because you're here. People, When you're not here, people ask for you, um, like many of our other guests. So. Uh, very much appreciate your time. If you're listening to the show, thank you so much. Uh, basketball coming up. We're going to go live after the first basketball game as well. So uh, you know we're going to be here for Badgers basketball and football going forward on Wisconsin. Thank you to everybody who tuned in, who left a comment, who supports the show. Uh, can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And with that, we'll talk to you tomorrow on Wisconsin. Let's go big win. Um, let's get it.